having discussed the different kinds of roots or radicals that are available to us, we can now come back to the topic of equations again and bring in that newer topic of roots or radicals and say, if we have equations that have roots, if we have equations that have radicals, how can we go about solving them? And again, that's really going to use that key feature that we have of roots, which is in order for them to simplify nicely, the type of root is going to have to match with the power that appears. Well, we might not have the power already, but because it's an equation, we might eventually get to a place where we can incorporate a power and unlock that square root or cube root or whatever we might have. So if that's kind of the, the idea there that we might be able to use, then that's going to be our driving force really. We're going to need to get a single root by itself, whatever root that might be. So we would want to get that by itself on one side in an attempt to unlock that one root. And we can unlock that by raising both sides of the equation to whatever appropriate power we would have to use. If we have a square root, then a power of two will unlock things. If we have a fifth root, then a power of five would unlock things. <coughs> Excuse me. One of the issues is that there's no guarantee that all of the roots have gone away by completing these first two steps. So there is a comment here that we might need to repeat steps one and two as many times as necessary until all of the roots that we've got are gone, until there are no more radicals that appear in our equation. Now, once we've gone through steps one and two and any repeats, what we're going to get is some sort of polynomial equation. So if, well, well, if we're lucky, as always, we won't have any funny powers to worry about dealing with there. We'll just have a nice regular old linear equation to solve. But in our worst case scenario at this stage, well, if we have any sorts of powers to worry about, we're going to try to factor things and use our knowledge of solving equations by factoring in order to complete that step. Then, as always, we're going to want to check our answers. And one of the key things that we've got to watch out for here is, again, those even roots and the kinds of restrictions that we have there. Since we're not allowed to take an even root of a negative number, we might have an answer, or what we think is an answer, that when we check it, ends up churning out something like the fourth root of negative one, which we're not allowed to have. So the answer that might create this bad situation, we would have to throw that in the garbage. So once again, very important for us to check our answers and like those equations that have rationals in them, very, very important for us because there might be some potential answers that we've got to throw away because they end up creating some sort of violation. Not surprisingly, one example already worked out before we work one live and in person, as it were. First step, get a radical all by itself, get a root all by itself. We already have the square root here already by itself on the left hand side of our equal sign. Step two, use an appropriate power to unlock that root. Well, this is a square root, so we would need to use a power of two. And again, with equations, if we do it to one side, we have to do it to the other side. So if we want to use a power of two on the left-hand side to unlock things, we're also going to have to use that power of two over here on the right side. We do not have any more roots that show up, which means we do not need to repeat steps one and two. We can move straight into solving that equation. And this again is one of the nicer ones. Yay, move the one, move the five, get an answer. But we need to make sure that that answer is legit. So we need to make sure that we check that. We don't want to get any sort of violations there. When we check that out, we get the square root of 36. That is equal to 6. Everything works out well there. And we do, in fact, have our solution. In our next example here, 
when we start reading through this, this is a cube root. So that'll be important here in just a moment. The other thing really that I want to worry about first though is the fact that that cube root is not by itself on the left hand side of the equal sign. That cube root has this plus six that's showing up. So I have to worry about first moving that plus six out of our way. So if we subtract six on both sides, we will get that cube root by itself. Once we have that cube root by itself, now we can go ahead and use the appropriate power to try to unlock this. And that would be because of it having a cube root, we unlock it with a power of three. If we apply that power of three on the left side of our equation, we must also apply that power of three on the right hand side. So we have to take that entire number negative five and raise that to a power of three. The left hand side unlocks, yay! That gives us the t plus two, nice and free and clear, no more radicals showing up. So that's rather nice for us. Over on the right hand side, we've got a negative 125 appearing. We have, again, thankfully, a nice quick equation here for us to solve. By subtracting two on both sides, I get what should be my answer of negative 127, and I can check that. I will leave that to you to verify for yourselves that that is, in fact, correct, and you should find that everything does, in fact, work out Hunky dory. So we've got our solution here, just the one. T is equal to negative 127. No matter what root we have, we can unlock it using the appropriate power. But alas, we don't make extra side notes that are unnecessary. So having that extra comment in our procedure there about the possibility of repeating the steps one and two, get the radical by itself, raise both sides to the appropriate power. Here's an example where we're going to have to do that. We've got two square roots that appear in here. And yes, if we are lucky, doing step one and doing step two, would end up getting rid of both of them. Well, we know already we're not always lucky about stuff like that, and that's why we have that comment in there. So let's see how this works. Let's actually see for ourselves what will happen as we work through step one and step two the first time, and why it is that we would need to repeat those two steps. Arguably, we can get either of these roots by themselves. Many folks might say getting that square root of z minus 1 by itself is a lot more direct because that would mean that I just have to add the square root of 3z plus 1 to both sides. Now we're going to add that at the beginning of our right hand side so that we don't accidentally lose track of the fact that that 2 has got negative in front of it or now a subtraction sign in front of it. So that's just kind of helping ourselves along the way to make sure we don't accidentally lose track of that. On the left hand side, we have a single root by itself. So we will try to raise that to the appropriate power so that we can get a little bit of our unlocking action to take place. And if we raise the left hand side to the power of two, then we must also raise the right hand side to the power of two. So the left hand side works out rather nicely, of course. The square root and the power of two unlock each other and leave us with the z minus one. The right hand side, sadly, does not work out as directly 
because what we have here is essentially a binomial sort of expression. I've got a square root followed by a minus and a two. That's a binomial. A square root's my first term, the two is my second term. I gotta square that bad boy, which means, well, we're gonna FOIL. First times first means that the square root of 3z plus 1 times the square root of 3z plus 1 will give us a regular 3z plus 1. The O and the I parts, however, will end up creating for us a minus 4 times the square root of 3z plus 1. We're still going to have a square root that's appearing here, and this is the reason why we will momentarily have to repeat steps 1 and 2. Finishing out that FOIL part, the L part of FOIL here is going to give us plus 4. Because we still have this square root that shows up right here from that FOIL process, we're going to need to repeat our step 1. Let's get that square root by itself. And again, we've got flexibility. We can move the 3z, the plus 1, and the plus 4. We could move that square root and we'll also go ahead and move the z and the minus 1. Potato, potato. I'm feeling frisky, so I'm going to go ahead and move that square root over to the left-hand side. And I'm going to get rid of the z and the minus 1 that used to be on the left-hand side. I had a 3z to start out with. I'm going to get rid of z by doing minus z on both sides. So 3z minus z will give me a 2z. have a plus one, I have a plus four, I'm going to add those together and get myself a five. Then I'm going to plus one to get rid of this, so that will give me a plus six. Rather than being any more frisky about things, now that I've got that square root all, well, almost all by itself there on the left hand side, I'm just going to go ahead and whip into my step two where I'm going to raise both sides to the power of two. What that means though is that I do need to literally be careful and raise the entire left side including the four. I need to raise the right hand side. Four squared is 16. The square root and the power of two will unlock each other. I'm gonna to need to keep that three Z plus one in a set of parentheses though because of that extra 16 that's sitting out there in front. I need to make sure that I don't end up <clears throat> confounding myself about how things work there. So playing it safe to make sure I don't make any sort of unavoidable mistake. I'm gonna go ahead and keep those separate by using parentheses around that three Z plus one. Over on the right hand side, another situation where we have the FOIL, at least this time we are looking at a much more traditional FOIL type problem. First, outer, inner, together already into a single term. Last, and recognizing that what we've got going on here with that power of 2 showing up is well, more than likely going to be an equation that we have to factor. So if we go ahead and distribute and kick everything over to the right hand side, we'll see how things play out. So if we distribute here with the 16, that's going to give us a 48z plus 16. We can go ahead now and 
move everything over to the right hand side of our equal sign by subtracting the 48 Z and subtracting the 16 and then we'll make the <clears throat> executive decision as well to have the equal zero appear at the end rather at the front. So again, very quickly, I'm subtracting 48z, I'm subtracting the 16, and when I do that, I'm just going to go ahead and put my zero and my equal sign at the end rather than at the beginning, simply for convenience sake. All of these terms happen to be even, so officially speaking, we could go ahead and factor out, or even better, we could just say, let's go ahead and divide through by four, and that would give us a z squared, a minus six z, and a plus five. Dividing by four, totally allowed, and gives us something that is hopefully a little bit quicker for us to factor. <coughs> Excuse me. Let's get ourselves just a little bit more room here to finish that factoring process. So factoring that bad boy, we would have a z minus 5 and a factor of z minus 1, setting each one of those factors equal to 0. means that we have two possible answers, z equals 5 and z equals 1. Now if we check the z equals 5, we are again going to want to go back to our original equation, which is not on the screen. We'll have to backtrack there. Just a moment. So let's backtrack up to that original equation. Oh, we can just barely fit that first one in there. So that original equation starts out with a negative square root 3 z I believe is going to be 5 with a plus 1 followed by a plus square root z I believe is going to be 5 minus 1 all underneath that equals negative 2 yes or no so the 3 times 5 is 15, 15 plus 1 is 16, square root of 16 is 4, and a negative out in front, negative 4. 5 minus 1 is 4, square root of 4 is 2, so that means I've got a negative 4 plus 2 equals negative 2. That checks out. I want to do the same thing with my other possible solution, which is the z equals 1. So another negative square root 3 times 1 plus 1 plus a square root of 1 minus 1 equals negative 2. Yes or no? 3 times 1 is 1. 3 plus 1 is 4. Square root of 4 is 2. Slap a negative out front. Negative 2. That's going to be a 0. Negative 2 plus 0 equals negative 2. That checks out. So I am, in fact, lucky in this particular case. Both of my answers are solutions. So we have z equals 5 and z equals 1 coming out of all of that work there.